Starting off at number 10 now, we have the Megalodon. Megalodon was the biggest shark that ever lived. It went extinct about 2.6 million years ago. Scientists think they could have grown to an insane 60 feet in length. That's about three times as long as the largest great white shark ever found. Here's how big they are. Before modern science identified them as a prehistoric species of shark, people used to think the Megalodon teeth they'd found were actually dragon tongues. Others said they belonged to giant serpents or even that they were rocks that had fallen from the moon. Just think how big and scary you'd have to be for people to think that your teeth belong to dragons or outer space. It used to feed on prehistoric whales, and unlike modern sharks, which go for the soft underbelly of their prey, Megalodon just went for the whole thing. They would bite down on the whale's chest with some 41,000 pounds of force, the strongest ever recorded, and simply crush the whale's chest cavity and organs. They didn't stand a chance, and unless you're an even bigger whale watching this video, you probably wouldn't either. Next up at number 9 now, we have Phobiromis patasoni. This was a huge rat. Some scientists have even called it Ratzilla. Technically, it wasn't a rat, but if you're scared of them, I bet you'd be scared of this. They reached a whopping 9.8 feet long. Their tails alone could reach 4.9 feet. They had the weight to go with it too, often reaching over 1,500 pounds. Like most rodents, they had big incisor teeth. In the case of Ratzilla though, their incisor teeth were about a foot long. It's a good job they were herbivores and used those teeth for plant life, however I don't think that knowledge would do much to calm people if they were suddenly seen running around the streets at night. Coming at number 8 now we have the Titanoboa. Everyone with a phobia of snakes, please look away now. This was a massive snake thought to actually be the largest that's ever lived. Its name literally means Titanic Boa. It lived around 60 million years ago. The largest individuals reached up to 42 feet in length and weighed over 2,500 pounds. That's well over a ton for a snake. It could grow this big because the Earth's climate was a lot warmer back then. As the climate began to cool over the next few million years, only smaller snakes could survive and snakes like the Titan Boa began to disappear. Probably a good thing for us humans because we would not want to be running around worrying about snakes that weigh as much as your average rhino. No thanks. Next up at number 7 now we have Dunkleosteus. This is a fish that lived about 370 million years ago during the late Devonian period. These things were big, growing up to 30 feet in length and weighing over a ton. What's most scary about them is their bite. This fish could bite down on its prey with a force of some 6,000 newtons. That might not mean anything to you until I say that's almost about four times the bite strength of a polar bear. This fish could bite your arm clean off you, including the bone. Its jaws were so efficient they could hinge them open and snap them shut in a matter of milliseconds. If we were to bring this species back to life, people might worry about them more than sharks. At number six now, we have the Mega Piranha. Unlike a lot of scientific names on this list, the Mega Piranha has a kind of obvious one. It was a giant piranha fish that lived about 10 million years ago. They grew to around 3 feet long and unlike modern piranhas, they had not one but two separate rows of teeth. Scientists aren't even sure how hard they could bite, but some estimates go as high as 4,749 newtons. If that's the case, they would bite more than twice as hard as a hippo. Neither of those sounds fun, but one definitely sounds worse. Moving on to number 5 now, we have giant Gigantopithecus. In many ways, this creature is what we'd call Bigfoot. It lived between 9 million to 100,000 years ago in Asia and was the largest ape on Earth. They stood about 10 feet tall and their diets were mostly vegetarian. When I say stand, I mean stand in the way gorillas and chimpanzees do. It's thought they walked on all fours. However, a small number of scientists do think they walked on two legs like humans. Either way, with a 12 foot arm span, you'd be best to stay clear of this giant and unpredictable ape. Next up at number 4 now we have Helicoprion. This was a shark like creature that lived some 290 million years ago during the early Permian era. We've seen some very weird creatures on the list so far, but this might just beat them all. The Helicoprion is famous for his spirally arranged clusters of teeth known as tooth walls. This bizarre set of teeth would have reached about 24 inches in length. Moving on to number 3 now we have the short faced bear. The scientific name for these is the Arctodus. They first appeared in the fossil record 1. 
1.8 million years ago and seems to survive all the way up until just 11,000 years ago. So a pretty close call for us modern humans. One specimen found weighed 2,110 pounds. They stood up to 12 feet tall on their hind legs, about twice the height of the average human male. Their vertical arm reach extended up to a further 14 feet. I could keep giving you guys stats on just how monstrous these bears were. Between those ones and the pictures you're seeing now, I think you get the idea. They were 50% larger than the biggest polar bears in recorded history. Scientists estimate they needed a whopping 35 pounds of meat a day just to survive. If we brought them back from extinction, I'm sure they wouldn't mind human meat being a part of that. Next up at number two now, we have the Meganeura. Dragonflies are nice, right? They're pretty cool looking creatures you find fluttering around ponds and rivers. They're a little bit freaky if they land on you, but you know, hey, at least they're small. Not Meganeura though. This massive dragonfly-like creature lived about 300 million years ago during a Carboniferous period. Its wingspan could reach up to 30 inches, making this thing about the size of a six-month-old baby. Don't ask me why I'm using a baby as a reference, it's just the best comparison I could find. They reach this size because insects need more oxygen the bigger they are. Back then, the oxygen levels in the atmosphere were higher than the current 20% we have today. This allowed insects, including Meganeura, to grow insanely big. You wouldn't need your hand to bat this thing away, more like a baseball bat. And finally at number one now, we have Dinosuchus. This is an extinct relation of the modern alligator that lived some 80 to 73 million years ago. That means it was alive at the same time as T-Rex. In fact, it's thought these two actually fought it out back then. They are thought to have been up to 33 feet in length and have weighed as much as five tons. It looks like the T-Rex might not have been much of a match for this oversized alligator. There have actually been T-Rex fossils found with massive Dinosuchus bites found in them. Perhaps they were just defending their territories from T-Rexes, or perhaps they saw them as food. Either way, they definitely were not scared of T-Rexes, and so they definitely wouldn't be scared of us. I get the feeling if we brought them back from extinction, that might be where we're heading next. Starting off at number 10 now, we have Spinosaurus. Let me start by asking you guys a question. What's the largest carnivorous dinosaur of all time? Surely it's the T-Rex, right? They've always been portrayed as the top dogs. Their name literally translates to Tyrant Lizard King. I was surprised Surprised to learn that it's actually the Spinosaurus, perhaps the largest known carnivorous dinosaur of all time. It lived about 100 million years ago. Estimates put the length of these things about 60 feet while weighing as much as 23 tons. That's three and a half times as much as the T-Rex. If its sheer size wasn't scary enough, you might have guessed from its name that it also had very big spines. They fanned out across its back and formed what is usually referred to as its sail. What scientists aren't sure about is if the spines were covered in in fat and looked kind of like a huge camel pump thing. A camel the size of a small building. Spinosaurus is a predator, but one that hunts in water. It's Ichthyophagus, a fish eater. Coming at number nine now, we have the giant crocodile. That's right, if you thought the best way to make a crocodile even more scary was to give it more teeth, you're wrong. You just make them way bigger, and they really did exist. The scientific name for this animal is Sarcosuchus. They lived around 112 million years ago during the early Cretaceous period in what is now Africa and South America. These things weighed about eight tons and grew up to 40 feet in length. It's almost twice as long as the biggest living crocodiles today. The giant crocodile would probably laugh at the crocodiles we have today. Then it would eat them, then it would eat us, then it would laugh. Luckily, they died out over 100 million years ago. Next up at number eight now, we have the walking worm. The scientific name for this one is Hallucigenia fortis. It was part of a family of walking worms. They looked like worms, they acted like worms, but they had legs, actual little legs. Get this, scientists discovered their fossils in Canada and China. They were so weirded out by their appearance, they called them hallucigenia, as in hallucinogenic, like hallucinogenic drugs. These things are so weird looking, the scientists basically thought they were tripping out. That's what I'm taking from that story. I'm thinking if normal worms usually creep people out a bit, then a big walking one that looks like it came from a Harry Potter book might be a little bit too much. Moving on to number seven now, we have Androsarcus. Think of a big scary mammal, a lion, a tiger, maybe a bear, oh my. 
this thing would eat them for breakfast. Andrusarchus lived in what is now China about 45 million years ago. The only known skull of this creature was discovered in Mongolia in 1923. It's now on display in the American Museum of History in New York. It was from only this skull and a few bones that scientists were able to make an accurate construction of what this beast would have looked like. When they finished the model, they were pretty shocked to see that it would have weighed about 4,000 pounds. That would possibly make it the largest land-dwelling mammal predator ever. We're talking bigger than all the lions, tigers, and bears, oh my. If you don't want to step into a ring with any of those animals, well, those animals wouldn't want to step into a ring with this thing. Next up at number six now, we have the pig from hell. I'll admit, that's the name I gave it. You'll see why though. This mammal is known as the Entelodon. They lived 37 to 28 million years ago, all across Eurasia. If we were around back then, we probably would have said they looked like pigs, but like really terrifying ones. Despite being on all fours, these things were four and a half feet tall. They were massive. Some scientists say they had a ravaging appetite for meat. These things would eat you, they'd eat me, and if there wasn't any of the meat around, they'd end up eating each other. You heard me right. Some people have suggested that entelodonts were actually cannibalistic. They craved meat so much, they'd even eat their own kind. How does that sound to you? Imagine one of these things charging right at you. You wouldn't stand a chance. You better hope they'd eaten their fill for the day or you'd be the filling. Next up at number five now, we have the three foot long scorpion. That is the scientific name, just kidding. This is actually Pulmono scorpius. It looks just like modern scorpions. It had the same front claws and sting in its tail. The only difference is this thing was bloody massive. It lived over 300 million years ago during the Carboniferous period, and this helps explain why these things grew so massive. Back then, the oxygen content in Earth's atmosphere was a lot higher. Scientists know that this is one of the key factors in the term how big some creatures get. So if you don't like creepy crawlies, just be glad there isn't too much oxygen in the air. We know this creature had venom, like many modern scorpions, but it's difficult to know just how toxic it would have been. One thing's for sure though, you wouldn't want to stick around these things to find out. If modern day scorpions cause problems for us today, imagine these three foot versions running around stinging us. No Thank you. Moving on to number four now, we have the Smilodon. I absolutely love this one. I remember watching a show as a kid called Walking with Beasts that featured this very animal. Check it out if you haven't heard of it. The Smilodon lived from 2.5 million years ago to just 10,000 years ago. If you recognize the picture on the screen right now, you may know this creature by its much more famous name, the saber-toothed tiger. They were a force to be reckoned with. They had very well-built forelimbs and exceptionally big canine teeth. They spread out all over the world and came in a number of different types. The biggest ones were thought to have weighed up to 880 pounds. You might think, oh, well, I'm glad humans never had to live alongside these beasts. Well, think again, they did. Considering the saber-toothed tiger didn't die out until about 100,000 years ago, they were already modern humans, just like me and you, walking around back then. Many of them got probably eaten by these big cats as they had nothing more than a simple spear to defend themselves. They died so that we could live. I vote that we don't bring them back. Next up at number three now, we have the Terror Bird. That's the nickname given to Forus Racidae, and I think the nickname suits it very well. They were the largest species of apex predators in South America for about 60 million years, starting 62 million years ago. That's a very, very long time. You can't even picture how long these things were the top dogs for. They were huge, standing up to 9.8 feet tall. They were flightless birds too. That's quite strange to think about. About. We usually think of flightless birds as quite harmless, dodos and penguins. Maybe ostriches could give you a good slash, but generally speaking, it's the flying hawks and things that are the scariest. This creature will make you think twice though. The terror birds were big. They weighed up to half a ton. Okay, so maybe that means you can outrun them. Oh no. Probably not. It's thought they could actually run as fast as a cheetah. That's about 75 miles an hour. If you see a terror bird and the terror bird sees you, just give up, accept your fate as it's lunch. Coming at number two now, we have the giant bird. That's my name for it. The real name for this creature is Pelagornis sandersi. It's one of the largest flying birds ever discovered. It lived 25 million years ago during the Oligocene era. This thing was huge. You may think you've seen a big bird in your time, maybe a pigeon or a seagull. Nah, you've not seen a big bird. Look at the size of this. It had a wingspan of up to 24 feet. Its wingspan was bigger than a giraffe is tall. Just try and imagine that. Perhaps fittingly, 
Finally, for one of the largest flying creatures to ever live, the only fossil of it was discovered in 1983 by construction workers at Charleston International Airport, South Carolina. And finally, number one now, we have Quetzalcoatlus. I'm not even sure how to start off with this one. Just look at this thing. This creature was a pterosaur. They lived alongside dinosaurs, but were very much their own thing. The Quetzalcoatlus was one of the largest flying animals of all time. It was toothless, it had a long stiff neck, and was just generally a bit of an oddball. Its wingspan was 52 feet. Remember the massive bird we were talking about just earlier? This creature had a wingspan twice that size. It's hard to even imagine how big this thing was. Ever since its discovery, people have been fascinated by it. It's been featured in documentaries and movies around the world. Perhaps the favorite one that I found is from Clash of the Dinosaurs. We already know that's wrong anyway, but wait till you hear this. The show portrayed them as having ultraviolet vision to locate dinosaur urine while hunting in the air. I'm obviously mocking this, but I do kind of want to watch it. Coming at number 10 now, we have Leo Larudon. This thing belonged to the Plesiosaur family. They lived alongside dinosaurs and also died out around the same time. Different species, but it might help you to visualize these scary beasts. They were huge, weighing more than three and a half thousand pounds and growing to over 30 feet in size. Around a quarter of that alone was just their skull. Think about that. That's seven and a half feet of just skull. A skull filled with a powerful jaw and several rows of razor sharp teeth. The Leoluderon outlasted some of its other plesiosaur relatives. They survived for about 10 million years after the extinction event that wiped out the dinosaurs. Their fossils have been found mainly in Europe, in places like France and England. That's right, I'm from the same place as Leo Lerudon. I'm trying to feel pride here, but it's not coming. Next up at number nine now, we have Gorgonops. This is an extinct therospid that lived about 260 million years ago. That is such a long time ago. The T-Rex dinosaur lived closer to modern day, right now, than to when the Gorgonops lived, by about 130 million years. This ancient creature was doing its thing before dinosaurs were even the top predators on the planet. It was actually the Gorgonops that were the top predators themselves. They grew up to two meters in length from nose to tail and seemed to have dominated Southern Africa. They needed their huge, sharp canine teeth to pierce through the hides of the big herbivores that were around at the time. Relative to its size, Gorgonops had a deep skull which had a triangular profile when viewed from above. And let's talk about those teeth again. The 12 centimeter teeth were so long they protruded beyond the lower jaw. Of course, big scary fangs like this needed protection, and so the jaw grew to be thicker at the front and the rear. Next up at number eight now we have the Magatherium. Sloths are cute, right? Slow, furry, small. Well, our next animal is two out of three of those things. Magatherium was a sloth that lived in South America up to just 10,000 years ago. Close call for us. These things were the size of elephants. Some specimens have been measured at 20 feet from head to tail. Can you even imagine that? There aren't many other land mammals that have ever been as big as this thing, perhaps mammoths. In terms of behavior, it acted much like a sloth, using its giant claws to cling onto tree branches or standing up on its hind legs to get hard to reach food. They weighed up to four tons, so if they fell over, you better hope you're not underneath them. An interesting thought is that because they died out not that long ago, in the grand scheme of things, humans lived alongside them. They may even have contributed to their demise. That's right, you, yes you, have an ancestor that saw a giant sloth. I think that's pretty cool. Moving on to number seven now, we have the Thalatocon. This creature was part of the Ichthyosaur family, another group of marine reptiles that are mistakenly thought of as dinosaurs. I didn't think dinosaurs when I first saw this picture of them though. My first thought was hell dolphin, like an actual dolphin from hell. These 28 foot long creatures were the top predators in their time, crushing prey their own size with their powerful jaws. It lived about 245 million years ago. We're talking about another insanely ancient creature here. So far, scientists think that it lived around the US West and coast. Not much more is known than that. In fact, because of their age and the lack of specimens, these things weren't even discovered until 2010 and weren't formally described until 2013. Next up at number six now, we have Arthra Pleura. If you creepy crawly haters thought, oh, I'd forgotten about you, oh no, this one's for you. This was an eight and a half foot long millipede that lived over 300 million years ago. Let me just say that again. This millipede was eight and a half feet long. Some of you who are squirming right now might be thinking, okay, it's huge, but at least it's slow and you know, I can see it coming from a mile off as long as it's not scuttling up to me. Sorry to break it to you, but these things were fast. Fossil trackways have been discovered that indicate this creature could move and maneuver quickly, moving hundreds of legs in perfect rhythm. Scientists even think if it felt threatened, it would have reared up onto its back 
to face the threat head on. There's a nice bedtime image for you. Moving on to number five now, we have the Deodon. This thing was the mother of all pigs. This was a pig that was the same size as a rhino. I really don't know how to sell this one to you other than that. It was a rhino pig. Deodon lived from 29 to 19 million years ago, and its fossils have been found throughout the US. Adults had skulls about three feet long, and they stood about 5.8 feet tall at the shoulders. If you like the sound of Deodon's name, you're gonna love its translation. It literally means hostile, destructive teeth. That's a pretty fair name, especially based on the pictures you can see now. It used to be called Terrible Pig, but when people realized just how hostile and destructive the teeth were, a name change was in order. Coming in number four now, we have Estomenosuchus. That took me just once to get right, I think. This creature's name means crowned crocodile. It lived around 267 million years ago, and again, its name suits it. The creature had protruding horns coming from its head, not actually dissimilar to the antlers of a moose. It reached a body length of more than 10 feet and had massive skulls over two feet long. I know I said the name suited them, but that was more the crown part. You see, they were actually more closely related to modern day mammals than dinosaurs. The rhino-sized creatures have become famous for their strange stumpy horns, but scientists still aren't sure why exactly they had them. Don't get me wrong, horns are cool, but most animals usually have a good reason for having them. Maybe these guys just thought they were cool. Next up at number three now, we have the Matsoya. This is an extinct mega snake that first appeared in the fossil records around 89.3 million years ago. They were huge, thought to be about 16 feet long. They needed that size too because it's thought they may have hunted and killed dinosaurs. Yeah, nothing much, just huge dinosaurs for lunch. Whatever its prey was, it strangled them to death in the same way boas and pythons do today. It was very successful. So successful, in fact, that it survived the mass extinction event that killed off the dinosaurs and continued to live for about 20 million years after that. As a species, not just one of them. That would be impressive, though. Next up, number two now, we have Jacolopteris. This extinct aquatic arthropod is also known as the giant sea scorpion. Eight feet long, this thing was. Sometimes even eight and a half feet long. Insane. It's thought to be the largest known arthropod ever discovered lived around 406 million years ago and was an incredible hunter, all thanks to its eyes, which were about the size of your head. They had segmented bodies with specialized limbs and spikes. They had spring-loaded claws to snatch up fish as they passed by, with the largest ones having an 18-inch spiked claw. I bet many things just saw this thing and gave up. And finally, at number one now, we have Therizinosaurus. That means scythe lizard, and you're about to find out why. This huge theropod dinosaur lived around 70 million years ago and stood over 11 feet tall. That's over twice the height of your average person. They also weigh between three and five tons, so a little bit more than chicken. As you've probably seen from the pictures, these creatures are known for their gigantic claws on each of the three digits on their front limbs. It's thought that the claws were over three feet long. They have the largest known claws of any animal ever. If you know of anything with claws bigger than three feet, then go ahead and prove them wrong on that one. But I don't think you'll find anything even near that size. Surprisingly, these creatures were actually herbivorous. They didn't use their claws for hunting. Predators would definitely definitely get a three foot slash in the face if they tried to come near though. Starting off at number 10 now, we have the Episeon. That name roughly translates to more than dog and you're about to see exactly why. It lived in North America about 15 million years ago where it really was the top dog. They grew to about five feet in length and weighed up to 300 pounds. They had a massive head as well, even bigger than mine, and very powerful jaws. This resulted in their skull looking more like a lion's than any canine species. This big dog needed to be big because it shared its territory with ancient big cats and bears. Epicyon would have regularly clashed with them for food and territory. Now scientists think its main prey would have been the Apicamelus, a type of camel that lived in North America around that time. That's right, if you're from North America, there could have been giant dogs chasing camels on the exact exact same spot where you're now standing. There's a thought. Next up at number nine now, we have the Pelagornis sandersi. You could also call this one the seagull from hell. They lived around 25 million years ago. Their wingspan is estimated to be between 20 and 24 feet. That is the largest wingspan on a flying bird ever discovered. That wingspan is about the size of an orca whale. It's also twice the wingspan of the modern day wandering albatross. Its proportions are so insane the scientists are actually 
actually surprised that it could even fly at all. It could have weighed up to 88 pounds, considered too heavy to fly. Right now the best theory is that it could fly because of its relatively small body and long wings and also that it spent most of its time over the ocean. In fact they thought it could only take off by hopping over the edge of a cliff. Coming in at number 8 now we have the Acrophyster. This is an extinct group of sperm whales that live between 13 and 5 million years ago. Modern day sperm whales are known for their very large teeth but they had nothing on the Acrophyster. Unlike modern day sperm whales they had huge deeply rooted teeth in both their upper and lower jaws. Modern day sperm whales only have that in their lower jaw. It had a short and pointed snout. This coupled with the robust curved front teeth suggests that Acrophyster hunted very large prey using its back teeth for shearing the meat apart. They had big heads, were very strong and had upwards curved Y shaped jaws. They were fairly big creatures thought to have reached up to 14 feet in size. Not as big as modern day orcas about the size of giant dolphins. Strangely enough a lot of scientific debate that revolves around this creature is about whether or not it had a top lip. I guess it's just going to be one of those big unanswered life questions. Moving on to number 7 now we have the Anomalocaris. This creature is also known as the Abnormal Shrimp which I love. It really is a perfect description. It's thought to be one of the first predators on earth. That's quite a title to have. It had a large head and a single pair of large compound eyes on stalks that comprised of around 16,000 different lenses. Its mouth was made up of 32 overlapping plates, 4 large and 28 small that resembled a sort of pineapple ring with the center replaced by a series of serrated prongs. Looking at models of them today they resemble small shrimps except they were a lot bigger than that. They could be over 3.3 feet long and had 2 arms over 7 inches long that protruded from their mouth with barb like spikes coming out. They ate hard sea creatures for breakfast, lunch and dinner. This is presumed because of the robust spines of their appendages. Basically you wouldn't want one of these things getting their mouth around your leg and say bye to your leg. Next up at number 6 now we have the Edestus. This shark lived from 400 to 300 million years ago. If you've watched one of our previous videos in this series you may think it looks a little bit like the Helicoprion. The one with the big sort of circular saw teeth. Well they actually belong to the same family but Edestus had more of an arc of teeth on both the roof and floor of its mouth. After its discovery scientists were baffled as to how it used this teeth formation to catch and eat its prey. For a while it was thought that it used its teeth like scissors bringing the top and bottom together to sort of crush and mash its prey into digestible chunks. Now though the theory has changed. New research by Wayne M. Itano of the University of Colorado suggests that Adestus used its outwardly projecting teeth in a vertical thrashing manner. It literally thrashed its prey to death. Hey. I mean whatever works. With quick and strong up and down movements the shark would have slashed and cut up its prey in seconds before ingesting it whole. I think we've all eaten like that once or twice in our life, maybe when we're really hungry but that is what Adestus did every day. Coming at number 5 now we have the Argavantes. These birds were bloody huge, probably second only in wingspan to the Pelagornis that we talked about at number 9. For me though these things were even scarier. Imagine vultures that stood taller than adult humans. Humans. Yeah, now you're starting to get it. They lived between 9 and 6.8 million years ago and had territories of up to 200 square miles. They would fly these incredible distances looking for food. Now, because of its huge size, it's thought that this bird may have actually been unsuited to hunting its own prey and instead lived as a scavenger, taking kills from other carnivores. Just like our giant seagull friends from earlier in the video, scientists have been trying to figure out how this bird was able to fly, as it seems to break the known laws of of bird flight, physically speaking. Of course, I'm not saying there are actual laws about birds flying. Skeletal evidence suggests that its breast muscles were not powerful enough for wing flapping for extended periods of time and that it may have relied on mountain slopes or headwinds to even take off. Moving on to number 4 now, we have the Atacopus. This is an extinct species of arachnids that lived around 390 million years ago. All of you arachnophobes may be glad that it's extinct when you hear about it. It resembled modern day spiders except for the fact that it had a tail. I mean that's weird enough on a spider but wait for it, the tail was basically a scorpion tail. That's right, if you've ever wondered how to make a big spider even scare 
scarier to some people, put a massive scorpion tail on the back of it. For a number of years after its discovery, scientists thought that Atacopus was the ancient ancestor of modern spiders. Then they rethought their position. There was an important difference between the two. Modern spiders produce silk to spin webs. Atacopus is thought to have also produced silk, but it used that silk to wrap eggs, lay drag lines, or construct burrow walls. It's this key difference that has now led scientists to believe that Atacopus is probably related to the ancestor of modern spiders, but is not actually a spider itself. Next up at number three now, we have the Purosaurus. I need to make an apology here at this point in the video. In a previous video, I described a creature known as the Sarcosuchus as the giant crocodile. I have since learned that there was more than one giant crocodile that used to exist. There were actually quite a few. The Purosaurus was one of them. It's the second largest giant crocodile to ever waddle the earth. It lived across South America about 8 million years ago. This monstrous beast had a very big, stout, robust head full of large shaped teeth that could snag prey and never let them go. The region it lived in is now made up of the Amazon rainforest, but back then it looked very different as it was actually part of a vast inland sea. That sea was full of giant crocodiles, whales, huge rodents, and massive turtles. Despite the size of the prey and the competition there, Purosaurus was the top predator. And when you see the size of the reconstructions they've made, you can see just why. Moving on to number two now, we have Camaroceras. This is thought to be the giant ancestor of the giant squid. So it was pretty giant. It first appeared in the fossil records during the middle of the Ordovician era, around 470 million years ago. It had a huge cone like shell to protect itself. Of course, as you might expect for an ancestor of this squid, it had big old tentacles for catching its prey. Thought to be between 20 and 30 feet, it was a formidable predator. It's thought they were stalkers ambushing their prey that moved across the sea floor. You may think it would be difficult to be sneaky with a 20 foot cone on your back, but that was also the reason it had to ambush, as the cone would have made chasing prey too difficult. Some scientists actually think that for the biggest of these creatures, they never even moved. They just sat in the dark at the bottom of the ocean, waiting for their next meal to pass by. And finally, number one now, we have Megalanis. This creature is essentially the great granddaddy of the Komodo dragon, an impressive sized modern creature, but it had nothing on this ancestor. They weighed over 1,300 pounds. That's more than 10 times the weight of an average human being. They also grew to almost 18 feet long. The Megalanis almost made it to the modern era as well, dying out just 50,000 years ago. If you look at when some of the other creatures on this list went extinct, 50,000 years ago is basically yesterday. They lived and died out in Australia, which means the earliest aboriginal people may have lived alongside them. With enough coordination, they may have been able to take them down, but it would have been risky. One bite from this creature would be enough to cripple even the most experienced early human hunter. When you hear about ancient creatures like this, it's no wonder that ancient cultures so often mention dragons existing. They kind of really did. Mm -hmm.